The atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima was pure, unadulterated horror. In a single blinding flash, it leveled a city and changed human history forever. Hiroshima became a benchmark of ultimate destruction. But just 16 years later, a single bomb was detonated that was over 3,000 times more powerful. A weapon so terrifying, even its creators were horrified. It unleashed a fireball five miles wide and a shockwave that circled the planet three times. This is the story of RDS-220, better known as the Tsar Bomba, the undisputed king of all bombs. To grasp its scale, we must start with the atom. On August 6, 1945, the world saw its first nuclear fission bomb. Little boy dropped on Hiroshima, used enriched uranium to spark a runaway chain reaction, releasing energy equal to about 15,000 tons of TNT. It obliterated 70% of the city and killed tens of thousands in an instant. For a brief moment, America alone possessed this terrifying power. But by 1949, the Soviet Union shocked the world by detonating its own atomic bomb, sparking a nuclear arms race. Hiroshima's 15 kiloton blast was just the beginning. The race was no longer just about bombs, but bigger bombs. Splitting atoms was just the first step. The real power lay in forcing atoms together. Nuclear fusion. The reaction that powers our sun. Unlike fission, which splits heavy elements like uranium, fusion slams light elements like hydrogen into each other under immense heat and pressure, releasing colossal energy. These were the hydrogen bombs or thermonuclear weapons. In 1952, the U.S. detonated Ivy Mike, vaporizing an entire island with a blast 700 times more powerful than Hiroshima. The Soviets followed a year later. The kiloton age was over, the megaton age had begun, and with it, the grim doctrine of mutually assured destruction. By the early 1960s, Cold War tensions were boiling. Berlin was divided, and superpowers stared each other down. In this climate of fear and bravado, Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev wanted to make a statement, not with words, but with raw physics. He ordered his top physicists, led by Andrei Sakharov, to build the most powerful bomb ever. This was never meant to be a practical weapon. It was propaganda, a psychological spectacle to terrify the West. Khrushchev timed the test to coincide with a Communist Party event, ensuring the world would watch in awe and fear. At the top secret Arzamas 16 facility, Soviet scientists designed a revolutionary three-stage thermonuclear device a fission bomb triggered a massive fusion stage, which in turn ignited an even larger third stage, designed for an unimaginable 100 megaton yield. But the scientists, including Sakharov, feared the radioactive fallout could poison vast parts of the Northern Hemisphere, including Soviet territory. In a rare act of restraint, they swapped the uranium tamper for lead cutting the yield in half to just 50 megatons. Even reduced, it was a monster, 3,300 times more powerful than Hiroshima. The finished bomb was enormous, 8 meters long, 2 meters wide, and weighing 27 tons. Too big for a standard bomber, the massive Tu-95 had to be stripped and painted white to reflect the thermal blast. On October 30, 1961, 
A modified Tu-95 took off from the Kola Peninsula, carrying the Tsar Bomba and its own potential doom. The crew was told they had only a 50% chance of survival. At 11.32 Moscow time, over the remote Arctic island of Novaya Zemlya, the bomb was released. A massive parachute slowed its descent, buying the crew precious minutes to escape. At 4,000 meters altitude, it detonated. A Soviet cameraman recalled, a brilliant flash over the horizon, then a heavy blow, as if the Earth itself had been killed. The firebomb measured nearly five miles across. The thermal radiation could cause third-degree burns 100 kilometers away. The mushroom cloud climbed seven times higher than Everest, reaching the mesosphere. The blast wave struck the bomber, sending it into a violent dive before the pilot regained control. The devastation was biblical. The uninhabited village of Severny 55 kilometers away, was vaporized. Wooden houses were destroyed 160 kilometers away, and windows shattered as far as Norway and Finland. The Tsar Bomba released more energy than all the explosives used in World War II, 10 times over. Its seismic shock registered a magnitude 5 earthquake. More astonishingly, its atmospheric shock waves circled the Earth three times. This wasn't just a bomb. It was a weapon that physically shook the planet. The world's reaction was swift condemnation. Even Sakharov, horrified by what he'd created, became a vocal critic of nuclear testing. His advocacy helped lead to the 1963 Partial Test Ban Treaty, banning atmospheric tests. The Tsar Bomba was never practical, too large and heavy for missiles. It remained a one-off show of force. The arms race soon shifted to smaller, more accurate missiles carrying multiple warheads. Subtle, but no less deadly. The Tsar Bomba remains the most powerful weapon ever built. A sobering monument to human ingenuity in service of fear. The Tsar Bomba was over 3,000 times more powerful than Hiroshima, a leap so great it defies comprehension. It showed that humans could harness the power of the stars, but also that such power carries unimaginable responsibility. It remains a chilling reminder of the heights and depths we can reach when driven by rivalry and fear. What does it mean for a species like ours to hold the power of a star in its hands? And will we ever learn to wield it wisely? If you found the mind-boggling scale and science of this ultimate weapon fascinating, like this video and subscribe for more stories about the technology that shaped our world. Your support helps us explore the most powerful and perilous creations in human history.